Welcome to the show of biology. I am Roma Malik and I'll be teaching you biology of class 11th. The topic for today is structural organization in plants and animals. Under this, today we'll be dealing with morphology of flowering plants. In the last episode of morphology of flowering plants, we discussed regarding the root the descending organ, shoot, the ascending organ, and the leaves, which are meant to carry out the process of photosynthesis. We'll be dealing with the rest portion of morphology of flowering plants. Inflorescence, the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis. This is referred to as inflorescence. Now there are two types of inflorescence. The first is the racemose inflorescence and the second is the cymose inflorescence. In racemose inflorescence, the main axis continues to grow and the flowers are born laterally in acropetal succession. In case of cymose inflorescence, the main axis terminates in a flower which are born in a bicipetal order. Flower. Flower is the reproductive unit of a plant. It has four different kinds of holes. This green portion is known as the calyx, which is also known as the sepals. This colored portion is the corolla, which is also known as the petals. And this central elongated portion has the gynaceum and the andracium. This centrally tube-like structure, this is the gynaceum, which is also referred to as the carpal and pistil. And these structures, small structures which you see around, these are the stamen or the andracium. Let us just have a look at the structures of the flower. It is the reproductive unit meant for sexual reproduction has four different kinds of holes, calyx, corolla, andracium, gynaceum. The calyx and corolla, they are the accessory organs and the andracium and gynaceum, they are the reproductive organs. Flowers are generally of two types, bisexual flowers and unisexual flowers. In case of bisexual flowers, in this flower, the male portion that is the stamen or the andracium and the gynaceum they are found in the same flower. Such a type of flower is known as bisexual flower. Beside this there is another type of flower which is known as the unisexual flower wherein only either the male or the female reproductive part is found. Symmetry of the flower is another important characteristics. The flowers may be actinomorphic or zygomorphic. In actinomorphic, for example, in Datura, they show radial symmetry. In zygomorphic, example, Gulmohar, they show bilateral symmetry. Depending upon the position of the ovary, the flower may be hypogynous, perigynous, or epigynous. Hypogynous flower. In a hypogynous flower, the gynaceum occupies the highest position while the other parts they are situated below it. If this is the gynaceum, the other portions will be situated below the gynaceum. In perigynous flower, which is also called half inferior, the gynaceum is situated in the center and the other parts are located at the rim of the thalamus. In case of epigynous flower, which is referred to as inferior flower, the margin of the thalamus grows upward, enclosing the ovary, while the other parts of a flower arise above the ovary. The parts of a flower. Four floral holes are found, calyx, corolla, andracium, and gynaceum. The outermost hole 
is the calyx, the innermost hole that is the corolla. Now, basing on this, they can be gamosepalous or polysepalous. When the sepals are united, these sepals, when they are united and they are joined here, they are called as gamosepalous. They are also polysepalous when the sepals are free. In case of corolla also, we find gamopetalous and polypetalous. Gamopetalous wherein the petals are united and polypetalous when the petals are free. The mode of arrangement of sepals and petals in a floral bud is called estivation. There are different types of estivation. Valvet estivation. In this, the sepals or petals in a hole, they just touch one another at the margin. That is the sepals and the petals, they'll touch one another at the margin. In the twisted one, one margin of the appendage overlaps that of the other one. If this is one margin, the other margin will overlap. So such a type of estivation is called twisted estivation. The next is imbricate. Here, the margins of sepals or petals overlap one another, but not in any particular direction. Example, gulmohar. There's another type of estivation, which is called vexillary estivation, in which there are five petals. The largest overlaps the two lateral petals, which in turn overlaps the two smallest anterior petals. Andratium. Andratium is the male reproductive organ, which is composed of the stamen. If we just have a look at these small structure, we'll see that the slender stalk which is found, that is the filament and these tip portions, they are known as the anther. The pollens are found in the anther. The anther is bilobed and each lobe has two chambers, the pollen sac. A sterile stamen is known as staminode. The stamen may be epipetalous when the stamens are attached to petals as found in brinjal. It may be epiphyllous when the stamens are attached to perianth, example lily. Basing on the nature of the arrangement of stamens, they are also categorized as monoadelphous, diadelphous and polyadelphous. When the stamens are united into one bundle, in case of China rose, it is called monoadelphus. When the stamens are united into two bundles, this is one bundle, if it is united into two bundles, then it is called as diadelphus. If the stamens are united into many bundles, we call it polyadelphus. Gynetium. It is the female reproductive part and it consists of three parts. If we have a look at this flower and we open the calyx and the corolla, we can easily see the structure of the gynetium. This portion is known as the stigma, which is the receptive organ. The pollen grains are dusted on the stigma. This elongated long portion is known as the style and this portion is the ovary. So, a carpal is made up of three parts, the stigma, the long elongated one, the style and this is known as the ovary. When the carpels are free, they are called apocarpus, example the rose plant. When the carpels are fused, example tomato plants, they are called syncarpus. The gynetium may be apocarpus or syncarpus. During the process of pollination, that is these anthers, which contains the pollen, when they are dusted on this stigma, which is the receptive organ of the flower, the pollens 
they enter through the stigma go through the style and come to the ovary wherein fertilization takes place after the process of fertilization the ovary develops into the fruit and the ovules into the seed the arrangement of ovules within the ovary is called placentation the different types of placentation are marginal exile parietal free central basal if we cut a section of the ovary the placentation is easily visible which can be seen very easily under a simple microscope marginal placentation the placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary and the ovules are born on this ridge example pea plant exile placentation here the placenta is axial and the ovules are attached to it in a multilocular ovary example china rose parietal here the ovules develop in the inner wall of the ovary or on the peripheral part example mustard free central the ovules are born on central axis and the septa are absent example primrose basal placentation here the placenta develops at the base of the ovary and a single ovule is attached to it example sunflower well in this episode we discussed regarding the types of inflorescence the cymos and the racemos the different parts of a flower hypogynous perigynous and epigynous flower gamosepalous polysepalous gamopetalous polypetalous estivation and the different parts of andracium gynacium and the placentation we'll be dealing with the other portion of morphology of flowering plants in the next episode Thank you.